Hey basketball coaches, in today's video I'm going to give you my top 5 basketball plays that could be used and highly effective in the year 2020 and beyond. Now, this is a follow up from a video from many years ago and these are kind of the updated plays of my top 5. These may not work at all levels, so keep that in mind. Let's get down to the clipboard. Let's check these out. Okay, so in this first play, it's going to be a triangle offense. We're going to be having player 3 showing to the free throw line extended. And when that happens, we're going to be having player 1 pass over to player 2. We're going to then have player 1 cut towards the rim. If he's open, definitely hit him up with a pass. But he is not definitely not our number 1 option. We're going to have player 1 pop out towards that wing. Now, what we're going to be having is player 2. He's going to be passing over to player 4 as a possible option to pass to player 1. Or, we could be having player 5 setting a back screen on player 3 who's going to be cutting across the key and setting up into that low post. Now, if he's open in this area, definitely hit him up with a pass. It's a beneficial option and he, in my opinion, could be your number one option. However, if he gets across and he's not open, what we're going to be looking to do here is one of two things. You can pass over to player four and maybe do some kind of a screen and roll with player one, or what I prefer to have done is have player two keep that ball Player 5 now sets up a screen up top for player 2. Now, player 2 is going to use that screen. He can now have player 2 go and drive towards the basket, or we can have player 5 roll off. Whatever works best against the defense that you're playing against. Now, I showed this against a man-to-man, -man, but I will show you it against a 2-3 zone as well. So against the 2-3 zone, we're still going to be having player 3 pop towards that free throw line extended. We're going to have player 1 pass over to player 2. And because it's against a zone, you could be looking at player 4 as an option because we'll be having player 1 cutting through. Now we have player 4 essentially isolated to guard 2 players and that's why it's sometimes a good option to pass to player 4 because now we'll have player 1 wide open. However, Especially if you pass the player 4 when player 1 is cutting towards or across the key. If he's open cutting across the key, pass it to him. He may have a quick shot, but we may also have player 5 open for a nice high to low pass or something similar to a high to low pass over to player 5 for a layup. So definitely keep that as an option. If, however, we don't have player 1 open and he goes down into that corner what we're going to be seeing now is the defense shift like this now what we could have is player five setting that screen on this side of player three and we can have player three cut across the key now we've overloaded this side one of these four players has to be open another option that may be a bit risky but depending on where player two is really guarding if player 5 was able to seal player 3, this may be a quick pass to player 5 for a layup. But again, that is a bit risky depending on where player 5 and 2 red are playing. If they're playing too tight in the middle of the key, that's not going to happen. But if they're playing a bit high and player 5 is playing a bit low on player 3, you may have that pass to player 5 if he is sealing his man. Now this next play will look like a low 1-4 offense, but I like to start this one off like this because it really loads the baseline. We're actually running a horns offense. We're going to be having player 4 and 5 sprint towards that free throw line, and now what they're going to do is now screen down four players 2 and 3, especially against a man-to-man -man defense. This works wonders. Now, you would want to have player 1 deciding which side he wants to have his screen. So if he has this palm up on the right side, that means player three needs to come up and set that screen, and we're gonna be having player two cutting into the key. Now, there's a reason for this. We're gonna have player three using or play, doing that screen, player two cutting towards the middle of the key. Player five is going to be now outside of the three-point line, 
and player one is going to be using that screen. Player one has two options. We are now isolating essentially player five red. If he's playing too low, trying to cut off that lane from player two, we can get player five an open three point shot. Player three may have an open three point shot himself, or if we pass into player two, let's say player five wasn't guarding all that well and this was a strong screen, player two may be having a nice open layup. Player three, this screen is not going to be rolling towards the basket. This screen is going to be popping back up top because if these players sag, if player one fights through player three sags, then we'll have player three open for a three point shot. Now against a 2-3 zone, these players are still going to be popping up and we're going to be seeing that bring all three players pretty well up. This is going to be closed off because generally speaking against a 2-3 zone, these two players want to force you towards the sideline. They don't want anything up the middle. And because of that, we're going to have player 5 screening and force screening away. We now have player 5 sinking back down into the middle because he doesn't want any baseline cuts. Now, from these players, let's say player 1's right hand is up. We're going to have player 2 set that screen. And we're going to be having player 3 cut down the key. Now, this is when players really have to understand what they're playing up against. For them understanding that they're playing up against a zone defense, what I would have liked to see is player 1 to use that screen still. However, I want to see player five rolling instead of popping I want him rolling towards the baseline what I call and what a lot of coaches or old coaches call the Russian spot which is roughly right about there behind the backboard and the reason is is we want to see player three cutting towards that high post if we can get that ball to him that's going to draw player five red up player three is going to be drawn up most likely because player one's going to be dribbling towards him by getting that ball into player three we now can pass down to player 5 for a layup. Now this next play will only work against a man-to-man -man defense. What we're going to be running is having player 2. He's going to be setting a screen for player 1. This is again a horns offense. And now we're going to be having player 3 cut down and set a back screen on player 5. So what I want to see here is player 1 using that screen, having the option for a 3 point shot, if not, we want to see player 5 cutting across the key. If he's open, hit him up with a pass for a layup. If he is not open, what I want to see happen is player 3 pop out, player 2 pops out, player 5 now cuts across, and he's going to set a back screen for player 4. And now player 4 is cutting across and maybe open for an easy layup. Now, if none of this works, Let's say all players are covered. What I want to see happen is player 1 to dribble back up top, player 3 to fill player 1's spot, player 4 to pop out, and now we're going to be running a 5 out motion offense until the rest of the shot clock is up. Now my final two plays that I'm going to give you are motion offenses off of the 5 out offense. The reason is, is because the 5-out offense is going to benefit most teams. I know we are all trying to shoot more 3-point shots, and we're all trying to spread out the zone defenses that pretty well every coach is running against us. And the 5-out works really well to do that. Of course, I'm not going to be showing you the simple, simple 5-out plays. They're not going to be the 5-out the pass and cut, pass and screen away and uh, cut. What we're going to do is... Uh, more advanced five out plays but if you wanted to see those basic plays I've got other videos and if I remember I will link them down below but let's get into these next two five out plays so this first play we're gonna have player four screen up for player three and player three is going to now cut towards the rim if he's open hit him up and when he goes towards the rim I want him to sit there for one and a half to two seconds showing his hands showing his hands saying hey ball and Basically have him ready to catch that ball. Have his hand up when he's cutting towards the rim. Get both hands up asking for that ball. Then if he gets it, he can just catch it, turn up easy. But this is not the number one option. Let's, get, let's keep on going. If he's not open, what I want to see happen is now he's going to set a screen away for player 5. And we're going to have player 4 
this is going to be a dribble handoff with player four. So player four is going to get that ball. And what I want to see happen after this screen and roll is player one, he's going to be rolling towards the basket. Of course, if he's open, hit him up. But at this point in time, he's going to be setting up a staggered screen for player five. Player five is going to be cutting baseline and he's going to be popping out into the mid range or three point line area. If he's open, hit him up with a shot. But again, that's not going, if that's not open, you can continue this play. Going on from there, what I want to see happen is, let's say player five recovers out. I want to see player two cut down and set a screen for player three. Player three is going to pop out and we want to get that ball to player three. He may be open for a shot. If he's not open for a shot and he gets that ball, we can go on to the next step. If he is covered, player four can't get him the ball. He needs to set a screen for player four so we can get that ball here. We really need that ball here. But let's say he was open, but he's covered for the shot. What I want to see happen now is player two staying there, but you player one using player two as a screen. Now what I want to see happen is player one pop out, and if he's open for the shot, he needs to take that shot. If he's not open for that shot, but he gets that ball, I want to see player two run up, set a back screen for player three. He's going to cut down towards the basketball net. If he's open, hit him up with a layup. If not, player five is going to move up top, Player 3 is going to pop out, player 3 is going to be then recovering, player 2 pops out, and we can do one of a few things. We can run a simple pass and screen 4, or whatever other basic 5 out offense we can run, or we can have a, just a screen down low, player 1 pops up top, and now we can have another 5 out play or whatever you may want to run. Now our last 5 out motion play, again these sometimes may be more advanced for than what your team can handle, but make sure to use them if you can because they are very effective. What we're going to start with is player 5 setting a screen and roll for player 1. Player 1 is going to use that screen and roll, player 5 is going to be rolling towards the rim. If he's open, hit him up with a pass, get that layup. If that's not open, what we're going to have now is player 1 coming out to roughly that free throw line extended and player 3 doing a dribble handoff with player 1. What I want to see happen now is player 5, I want him to set a screen away for player 2. Player 3 is going to be dribbling up top and player 2 is going to be using that screen. If he's open for a layup, take the layup. If player 3 is open for the 3, take the 3. You need to make that decision quick. What would your player rather have, a layup, an assist, or a three-point shot? It all comes down to what is open or what time of the game it really is. Now, if none of that is open, let's say those defensive players got through, we want player five to step out, player two to step out, and now we can set up another five-out basketball offense. I hope that these plays help your team win more games. If they do, let us know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you, and I'll see you guys again in our next video.